and are you quenched? Jesus talked about, in verse 37, he says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus cried out and said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So get saved. Verse 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, the very core of his life will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. Jesus said, I want rivers of life to flow out of your life. I want, I want you to not just be barely squeaking through life. I don't want you just barely making it. I don't want you just hanging on by one thread. I want you to have an abundant life. Abundant life during disaster, abundant life during success, abundant life during uh, what at the pastor's meeting, one of the pastors said, you know what, most of life is not disaster or great, you know, ebullient living. It's just normal life. You know, taking the trash out, going to work, and putting car, gas in the car. It's just normal life. The Lord wants us to have an abundant life. Disaster, normal life, and, and during those, those hard struggles. Everything he wants to overflow. Jesus said, I want rivers of water to flow out of your life. Rivers of water would mean that when we we're saved, he would flow out of our lives, making us joyous. He says, I want you to be excited about your sins being gone. I want you to read your Bible like I'm talking to you. I want you to, to flow into prayer. He says, basically, I want you to have the, the river flowing out of your life, the Spirit, because you believe and receive the Spirit. I want you to know that you have salvation that's abundant because that's the way I designed it. But if it's not that way, then slowly something has happened. And what we have to do is, is to see if the joy of our salvation has gotten slowly, like my two-year-old son did, slowly quenched. You know, it wasn't overnight. It was over a month. Everything just slowed down, and, and the water pressure left. Well, what are the signs that this is happening um, in our lives? Basically, I, I just have a handful of them. If you have gone from first being saved and excited about your salvation to now not even being sure you're saved, it's a sign of spiritual drought. Did you know that's the number one complaint of most believers? They don't even feel like they're Christians. And, and when, when we go from the excitement of knowing that we have eternal life to not even being sure we're saved, that's a, a drought warning. Number two, if you've gone from an overwhelming desire to flee sin and resist temptation, and now you're so discouraged, you don't resist anything. You're just taking whatever comes. That's how life has gotten. It's kind of like you're, you're just numb. That's a drought indicator. If you've gone from voraciously reading your Bible, marking it, underlining it, memorizing, to now you'd rather just sit and fall asleep in front of the television, those are drought warning signs. And what the Lord says is, it's time to call your builder for a repair visit. I mean, as simple as it was for me to go to the phone, call Paul Reed and say, the house you built isn't working the way you said it would work, is exactly what the Christian life is all about. We're supposed to call the Lord and we're supposed to say, Lord, you've told us, and by the way, this is Ephesians 4, and, and the Lord says, you know what? the handle of your life is, and this is what we're going to study in the weeks ahead, what keeps us from being full of the Holy Spirit? Any untruthfulness, if we're not speaking the truth, the Spirit of God, anger that isn't glorifying to God, wrath, giving places in our life to the devil, and dishonesty, stealing in any way, corrupt talking. This is all Ephesians 4. All of those grieve the Holy Spirit. And we're supposed to put those away. We're supposed to call the builder and say, I don't want to be quenched anymore. I want what your spirit offers, kindness, tenderhearted, forgiving spirits, being godly in Christ. I want to be filled again. Ephesians, 4, or Ephesians 5 now, verse 18 says, I want to be, I want that river flowing out of my life again. I want that river so that so that it just feels like when I open the Bible, I'm in God's presence. 
When I pray, it's like I know I'm talking to him. I'm so aware I'm forgiven. I'm so aware that I, I belong. I'm called by God's name. That's what fullness of the Spirit is all about. We need the Spirit's power to glorify God, to live this way. We, it's like the water coming into our house. Everything came to a standstill in Tulsa at Christmas of 1995 because the water wasn't coming in. The river wasn't flowing. We need the river of God's Spirit to glorify God. And so we're supposed to remember that our, and this is an outline of what we're going to do, our body is the temple. We have the Spirit from God. We're not our own. We we're bought at a price. We're supposed to glorify God in our spirit because we belong to him. Glorify. The Holy Spirit's making headquarters in us. He does everything necessary for our lives, and we have to make every effort to surrender to him. So this morning at communion, here's a question. If you've gone from being saved and excited and now not even being sure you're saved, as we bow our heads in a moment, call your builder. Say, I'm not, it's not like you promised. I want to repent. It's not you that's changed, it's me. I want to come back. No matter how many steps away, it's only one step back. If, if, we've, if we don't resist sin, we have to confess that and say, Lord, I want your grace so I can say no and deny ungodliness. If we've gone from voraciously feeding on the word of God, we have to say, Lord, I want you to change that. It's time to call your builder for a repair visit. And basically what the Lord says is, I want to flow out and make you excited about your sins being gone at this communion. I want you to go out of here having a hunger for the Bible and, and say, God, I want you to talk to me. And I want to make prayer, like tonight. You know, when I made that announcement about prayer meeting, you know what some of you thought? I can't imagine spending 45 minutes praying. I don't know what I'd pray about. Did you know what fullness of spirit makes us want we never have enough time there's so much to pray for there's so much benefit in communing with god that we want and need and seek him